I started WikiLeaks to, to solve a very interesting problem to me, um, which was to know the fate of man, to know the fate of mankind, insofar as uh, that development of man is revealed by the development of his in institutions and how they actually behave in practice internally. And the, the great uh, political struggle of mankind, insofar as it's been rational, and we all know politics is largely irrational, but the irrational part, I feel, is sort of random. And the rational part is based upon what we know, what we know about ourselves, what we know about each other, and what we know about how uh, human resources are distributed and how human institutions behave and what sort of internal and external rules uh, we engage in. From that, we can perhaps uh, produce a better or more realistically put, less worse uh, human civilization. Because NATO is a Trojan horse. It's effectively a US military operation conducted on European soil. Bases in France, bases in Germany, not France, in Germany, bases in Italy and so on. It's basically a, a US operation. Uh, it's not really European. I mean, it would be trivial to call it European. Um, you know, when Trump came and scolded, once uh, Stoltenberg told him, you know, what are you doing? I mean, he's talking to an employee, not to an equal. 850 bases in the world, military bases, when the rest of the world combined, including Russia and China, has less than 90. Uh, we're an empire. We, we, would, we would make Rome's emperors at the height of the Western Empire in particular shudder. We are so powerful, it's pitiful, but it's going. It's going, it's ebbing, it's running out fast. And if we don't figure out a way to find an off-ramp into this kind of world I was talking about, comedy, collaboration, cooperation, um, we're going out catastrophically. The world is really in an uproar at this neoliberal project of privatization, austerity, um, financialization, inequality, and militarization. This has been a disaster the world over, likewise for the American people who are really hurting. In Latin America alone, there have been about 60 U.S. military interventions since 1890. The United States perpetuates this daily violence and subjugation, not to spread democracy or human rights, but to extract resources and protect capital. And that's how empires die, by the way, as Arnold Toynbee and others have written. Uh, and, and when uh, that militarism, it's a kind of, it disembowels the country. It's a kind of cancer within. So it doesn't matter how many military debacles uh, it orchestrates, starting with Vietnam, 20 years in the Middle East. Uh, they're never held accountable. They leap from one fiasco to the next. National security doesn't mean what it sounds like to you and me. National security isn't about preventing foreign troops from landing on U.S. shores, right? We have the largest military spending in the world. Uh, we outspend the next 10 nations combined. We could fight a war with the next 10 nations combined uh, and beat them handily. We are uh, an extraordinarily advanced nuclear nation. Uh, our national security is not in question, particularly from political movements, but national security from the perspective of an intelligence officer, whether they're CIA, the NSA, or the FBI, means stability of the current political system. The mainstream media are an ideological instrument. Now that they have uh, they have owners, they have commitments, they have uh, uh, advertising support and so on. They, they're very valuable. I mean, I read them all the time. I'm glad they're there. But we shouldn't have any illusions. They're not coming from Mars. They are based on existing institutions of, of power uh, and domination within our societies. And that affects uh, the way what they choose to discuss at all, some things they don't discuss, and the ways in which they do it. It would be almost a miracle if that weren't true. And when they condemn actions like these, that should be taken as praise. They were doing the right thing. <laughs>